This is a 3D printed 5 inch race quad I designed completely from scratch. And this thing is ridiculously fast. Oh! Oh, oh, no. <laughs> in this video, I'm going to show you how I designed, built, and tested this quad, as well as how you can build it yourself. My intent for this project was to scale down the giant 3D printed quadcopter I made last year and turn it into a race quad that more people could build. However, in the process, I ended up redesigning almost every part. To actually build this frame, I of course used 3D printing. The main center body of the quad is printed out of carbon fiber nylon, and it's going to house all the electronics and the battery. The arms that hold the motors are a scaled down version of my giant quadcopter. Ideally, these would also be printed in a material like carbon fiber nylon, but I wanted to match the original color scheme, so I just used PLA. Now the assembly of this quadcopter is actually pretty simple since there's only a couple of parts. The center body piece gets four of these four millimeter heat set inserts installed. These brass inserts add a little bit of weight, but they prevent plastic threads from stripping out in the future, so I think it's worth it. Next up is by far the most satisfying part, and that's installing the arms. Each arm has a dovetail, and they slide into a corresponding dovetail on the body. This makes a really secure connection without any additional hardware. Now I wanted to make this build look even cooler, so I added a spot to put LEDs on each arm. This ends up adding a little bit of extra wiring, but it makes the quad look really cool at night. To make this thing actually fly, I installed some cheap 2207 motors, as well as an F405 flight controller. As always, a full list of hardware for this project will be available in the description below. I will also add a link to the full CAD file in Onshape. This means you can actually modify the design if you want and then print it out yourself, all completely for free. To connect all these electronics, we need to do some soldering. When I designed the frame, I added some additional features to help with wire routing, and this makes this step a lot easier. However, there are still a lot of wires in a small space. All right, now I wanted to make sure this thing didn't just fall apart in the air, because it is just plastic after all. So let me introduce you to my good friend, Analysis. Trust me, it's a love-hate relationship. In a hover, the force on each arm of the quadcopter is gonna be one quarter of the total weight. This quadcopter weighs about 569 grams. Nice. So that works out to about 1.4 newtons on each arm. We can run a simple FEA analysis in Onshape. This tells us that the max stress in each arm is about 0.3 megapascals. And then we can compare this to some material data I collected last year for PLA. As you can see, we are well below the ultimate tensile strength of PLA. Since this is an elastic analysis, and we're well within the elastic region of this material, we can just scale the stresses and displacements and say that in a 10G maneuver, there's not gonna be any issues. Now to fly quads like this, almost everyone uses something called FPV. This stands for first person view and it's basically just slapping a camera on there so you can put yourself in the quads reference frame. It makes flying things that are this fast and small way easier. You also just look super sick in these goggles and there's definitely no one that's gonna make fun of you. Sick. There are many different types of FPV systems out there at a lot of different price levels. For my build, I went with the DJI O3. This is mostly just so I can get good video for you guys, but you could easily attach an analog system or a different digital system for this. This design is really flexible. The camera and video transmitter get installed in this little blue cap piece, and I left it all exposed so that it can actually cool down while it's flying. If these things don't get airflow, they literally just cook themselves. Hello, Nerdy Michael's back. Nerd alert! So this frame is entirely plastic, which makes it way less stiff than the typical carbon frames that these quads use. This made me a little bit concerned about vibes, and I'm not talking good vibes and bad vibes here. I'm talking destructive vibes. I ran a quick modal analysis on this arm and found that the first flex, tangential, and torsional modes are at the frequencies down below. And now if you're a real nerd, you'll know what a Campbell diagram is, and well, here it is. Since we're using three bladed props, we're gonna look at the three Perev line, and as you can see, we have three crossings dead center of the operating range, which is really not good. For those of you that have the privilege of never having to deal with this stuff, this basically means that when the motors hit a specific RPM, which corresponds to these frequencies, the arm should start vibrating, which is not good. I could change the design and add some stiffness or whatever, but I'm just gonna test it and see if it's a problem. Now, before we get to the testing, if you wanna build this, but maybe don't have access to a 3D printer, you may wanna check out the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. They make it really easy to get custom 3D printed and CNC machined parts. Just dragging my file onto their website, I get an instant quote, and it only costs a couple bucks to SLS print the arm of this quadcopter out of PA12 nylon, which is pretty cool. If you wanna check them out, I'll put a link in the description below, but let's get back to testing the quad. All right, time to test this thing out. Let's see what it can actually do. All right, so for batteries, I'm using this 1300 milliamp hour four cell LiPo. Putting it in the quad is super simple. All you do is slide it in, make sure it's centered, and then tighten the strap. Chest mounted GoPro. This is some like 2012 YouTube stuff right here. Oh yeah, ladies beware. Let's do this. Ah! 
For the first couple flights, I just took it up and flew it back and forth down the field. And I was really impressed with how well this thing flew. I basically did no tuning on it, so there's definitely room for improvement, but it still flies really well. Now, I also didn't have the on-screen display working quite right, so I couldn't actually tell what my battery voltage was. So I only flew for like two minutes just to be safe. Update, we kind of crashed. Oh, it's upside down. Nice. There she is. Totally undamaged. Now, I'm mostly just flying this thing in angle mode right now, and that's mostly because I'm, you know, one of those DJI kids. I have done some acro flying, so I'll probably switch into that once I get a little more comfortable. Or I'll just find someone else to fly it well. <laughs> Putting the 360 camera in this quad gave me some pretty cool shots. However, I think I should have mounted it a little bit higher, because you'll see there's a lot of distortion down towards the base. Regardless though, it had no issues carrying the weight, which means you could put a GoPro on here, no problem. After I was done flying with the 360 camera, I put a fresh battery in it, or at least what I thought was fresh, and took off to test flying in an acro mode. Now, while my pilot skills are very basic, I was still easily able to do flips and things like that with this. Now, you might notice that the video feels kind of jerky, and that's actually because I had horizon leveling on, which was actually super annoying. It felt like it was fighting me the whole time, so I definitely need to just turn that off. Overall, this thing is still a blast to fly. So at this point, I'd only been flying for like a minute and a half. So I wanted to try to do a high speed pass. Go. Oh, update. We definitely ran out of battery. I don't, oh, it's right there. I see it. I think what happened here is this is just an old battery that I charged up a while ago. So the voltage still said it was fully charged, but it just didn't have the same capacity because it had sat so long. Oh no, the arms. We broke some arms, guys. Luckily, replacing these arms is an easy fix. So at this point, I knew the quad flew pretty well, but I wanted to see what it could really do. So I packed up the car and took it to a fellow Ohioan and way better YouTuber, Peter Streeple. Peter, fly this. Okay, into the ground, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Woo. It's got some, I haven't flown a 4S quad in forever. This is like a five incher and I have not flown this since like, I don't know, 2017, anything this big. Well, you're, you're already way better than I am, so. <laughs> Woo, it's all crispy. <laughs> Ooh, it does loops and stuff, that's amazing. Let's do some orbits. Question is, does it feel like it's 3D printed? No, it just feels like a normal quadcopter frame because it's like solid. Like when I was messing around with this frame, it feels like ex extremely stiff and that's really good for like drones and whatnot. Man, this is actually really fun. I have not flown HD like FPV in like forever. Mainly because I had, I've only had the DJI thing and it's like fragile, so I'm afraid to do anything. I mean, I'm flying your quads, so I should be afraid to do stuff, but it flies hey, really good. I will be disappointed if we don't break it at least once. That's awesome. Yeah, this thing is locked in. Did you do any tuning at all? <laughs> Literally none. Dude, this thing's great. Hey, for no tuning, yeah, that's can't great. complain too much. I mean, I'm not a super quadcopter expert, but it seems fairly well set up. I, it does have a little bit of high-speed jitter when I punch out. Yeah. But then again, I'm not an expert tune, quad tuner, so I can't say too much. All I know is it flies, it flies pretty well, and it hasn't crashed yet. <laughs> so that's a win in my book. <laughs> Next up, we launched one of Peter's planes and then used the quad to chase it. This made for some really cool air-to-air -air shots. All right, operation chase the plane. All right, let's get it done. It's so fast. All right, that plane looks sick. You're like right behind it, that's awesome. Yeah, it's like, I'm just like stuck on it. <laughs> I'm 
Just gonna try not to hit it. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, next up, I wanted to try chasing the plane because I'd never chased anything that was flying before. All right, well, I'm an amateur, so we're gonna go into angle mode here. All right, angle mode for sissies? For nerds. All right, yeah, don't crash it. I wanna fly it some more. That thing is sick. And I was actually pleasantly surprised with how easy this was. All right, we're seeing if we can take out Peter's plane. Here. All right. <laughs> I think this quad's at like 10% throttle trying to keep up. <laughs> it's such a slow, easy flight for it. I'm actually shocked it's not. I think it's easier following something moving in the air than it is to uh, like track Fire something mm -hmm. that's like stationary. After doing this for a while though, what I really wanted to figure out was how fast this thing could go. So we landed the quad and the plane and got ready to measure the speed. All right, plan now is to see how fast it'll go. So I've got this little GPS and we're just gonna Stick that guy right on there. And then for batteries, we're switching to the 6S battery. So, should get pretty crazy. All right, Peter, make it go as fast as humanly possible. All right. Ooh. Oh, God, it's so much power. Whee! Ooh. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna line up for a speed run here. That is so fast. <laughs> After doing this first pass, we brought it in to adjust the camera to make it easier to fly. All right, grand finale. Oh, the battery slit. It looks like the battery slit. 99.4 <laughs> miles Are an hour. Are you serious? It didn't look like it was going that fast. 100 miles an hour there, sir. That's crazy. Okay, <laughs> let's, let's, let's change the tilt a little bit, and I'm going to send this thing again. Speed run. Take two. All right, recording. Arming. Do it while it's fresh. Ooh, it got down to 19.6 volts. <laughs> One more for good measure. Oh, the voltage is dropping off. I really hear the RPMs coming down. <laughs> <laughs> this battery might not be super happy. One more pass. One, One more, more pass. pass. Right. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, battery fell out. We lost oh, it. <laughs> no. oh, he said one more pass. That's what you get. <laughs> this is my fault. This is my fault. <laughs> I was literally like, we're done. And you're like, one more pass. Well, okay. No, the I literally saw the battery fall in front of the screen and it just tumbled. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, battery fell out. We lost oh, it. <laughs> no. All right. All right, let's go pick up the course. We gotta go investigate now. <laughs> oh, that was epic. Well, what have we got here? Surprisingly, everything is still intact. Yo, Look at that. It's 100. It 100 actually miles an went hour. over. That's awesome. 100 miles an hour. It's worth it. That prop is exploded. We have one broken prop and then one broken arm. Nice. It's all muddy. I think it'll fly again. Or, oh, yeah. We'll that's not bad. We'll replace that arm and uh, like, dude, we'll that's. Be it's Back a 3D printed business. frame that slammed into the ground at like over, well, not 100 miles an hour, but over, it was going over, 100 miles an hour. <laughs> over a couple, yeah. yeah. And it tumbled for a while. Now, I was actually really impressed with how well this quad handled that crash. And once again, huge shout out for Peter for helping me out with this. If somehow you haven't checked out his channel yet, you definitely should. Now, to show you how easy this thing is to repair, I replaced the arm as fast as I could and recorded the whole thing. This design only uses bolts that have M2.5 millimeter heads, therefore you only need one screwdriver to do anything. Replacing the entire arm, not including the LEDs, took only 4 minutes and 15 seconds. Now I know 3D printed frames kind of get a bad rap from some of the biggest names in FPV, but hopefully the modularity and just the cool looks of this frame make some of you guys want to build it. And personally, I think it's just cool that you built the entire quad rather than just buying some frame. But that's all for this video. So make sure to subscribe for more and I'll see you guys in the next video.